Chocula? You must be out of your damn mind. What did I tell you? No one remembers Blackula except for us and Quentin Tarantino. Look. Welcome to The Quiet Riot. Thank you for joining me today. This is where we talk film, television, and media. I'm your host, Angelia. Sometimes I'm joined by my little French bulldog who works as my producer, assistant, and sometimes co-host. She is currently outside trying to convince our neighbor dog, our little bestie, to come and join her in the backyard. So if you hear a whole lot of barking, that's what that's from. In today's video, we are discussing black exploitation horror film. Black Hilla released in 1972. Prior to this, Shaft was released in 1971, and that film really started the black exploitation craze of the 1970s, and Black Hilla ended up starting the black exploitation horror film craze. Now, this film is directed by William Crane, though it is written by three white screenwriters. They did take some notes from William Marshall, who wanted to know a little bit more about who Blackula was. Today we will be discussing William Crane, who directed the film, as well as William Marshall, who portrays Prince Mamawaldi, aka Blackula. And like our other videos on Dracula, we will be discussing things behind the scenes, in front of it, giving you my own opinion, and the initial and modern reception of the film. My previous videos on Dracula on 1931 starring Bela Lugosi and 1958 starring Christopher Lee is available to watch in my Dracula playlist and you can find those in the description box below along with all of my resources. Blackula can be watched on Prime with subscription as well as various other services both free and paid for and that information will be in the description box below. Blackula. Released to mixed reviews in 1972, Blackula was one of the highest grossing films of the year, inspiring a wave of black exploitation horror films and a sequel released in the following year. The first horror film to receive a Saturn Award, Blackula starred William Marshall as African Prince Mamawaldi, a vampire turned by Dracula in 1780. The film takes place in the 1970s as Black Hula wakes in Los Angeles. William Marshall was known for his bass voice, a trait that made Black Hula all the more enticing. Before Black Hula, Marshall had starred in several films and TV shows, but was blacklisted in the 50s when he was named a communist in counterattack anti-communist newsletter. For your blood, he hungers for your soul. Born in Gary, Indiana on August 19, 1924, Vivian, a dentist, and Thelma Marshall, William moved to New York to pursue his career. An opera singer, Marshall acted in both leading and character roles. After graduating from Governor's University, he attended New York University in art and studied acting at the Actors Studio, American Theatre Wing, and the Sanford Meisner at the Neighborhood Playhouse. He appeared as Othello in at least eight different productions of Shakespeare, with the 1981 performance being recorded for television. The London Sunday Times said that Marshall was the best Othello of our time. Marshall was blacklisted in the 1950s, but that didn't stop him from continuing his, his eclectic career on both stage and screen. He appeared regularly in television throughout the 60s and 70s, appearing in Star Trek, Bonanza, and others. An acting teacher, Marshall taught the craft at various institutions in both California and Chicago. He portrayed Frederick Douglass as he resembled him in appearance, and Paul Robeson, who he resembled in present. Marshall appeared in many screen and stage projects leading up to and after his appearance in this film. He was a Shakespearean actor and opera singer with a commanding presence and deep enchanting voice. William Marshall is a hard man to forget. Hot, fresh blood will quench his awful thirst. Blackula was directed by William Crane in his first outing as director. He had previously worked as an intern status in another film, and he is a graduate from the University of California. So at this time, he was very green and just ready to get to work. Blackula is a black exploitation vampire horror film that follows Mama Waldi, a African prince who awakens in 1970s Los Angeles. 
Blackula, along with the action crime film Shaft, released a year earlier, is said to have begun the black exploitation craze of the 1970s. The film does feature various stereotypes that have made the style of films a divisive subject, and I definitely recommend watching different black critics and creators discuss their personal thoughts on both Blackula and the black exploitation craze. There are various blog posts and videos that I will link in the description box below for you both on Instagram and TikTok and I will put those creators down in the description as well. I really want to talk about Black Hula, but I also know there's certain aspects of it that I can't go into as much detail about the exact feelings on the way it is perceived and my own thoughts on the matter, so I do think that is really important to put out there. The film does include the Essler in reference to the first victims after the prince wakes up. I do personally like those characters, even though they are quite stereotypical as two gay men, but I do like this aspect of them bringing him to to the U.S. as antiquing, uh, as antiques from Dracula himself and essentially their death being caused by them antiquing. I honestly just think it, it certainly adds a bit to their character and it's just genuinely a bit funny. I feel like those characters would be, would be done a lot differently today. They're, they wouldn't be played so much as laughs in the same sense that they were then. We obviously have, I mean, comedy has evolved in various different ways and just because something couldn't be made exactly how it was back then doesn't mean that it couldn't be made today. Blackula is apparently having a remake and I'm really wondering how they're going to establish it. I think it is one that could, you know, do with a remake because there are certain things that you could do differently, especially if you have a lot more black people involved behind the scenes, as in this case you had the production company that was white owned and you have the white writers, but in this case you have William Crane and William Marshall who's really bringing their own stuff to the table and with a remake you could have a lot more black people involved with the hide the scenes to give it a lot more authenticity and really focus on a lot of the things that uh, I myself and other critics have said they wish they would have dealt with a little bit more in this film. The gay couple at the beginning were also an interracial couple, which had yet to be a common occurrence. Marshall told Kevin Thomas at the Los Angeles Times, you're joking, I said when I was asked to do it, but I thought it had possibilities. I had damn near many pages of criticism as there were in the script itself. AIP didn't take most of the criticisms, but they did meet his demands for historical context. At the start of the film, Prince Mamuwaldi and his wife Liza have come to Dracula for help to end the transatlantic slave trade. Of course, he finds benefit in slavery, and instead of helping, he turns the prince into a vampire, replacing him in a coffin for him to thirst for blood for eternity. Luva is left in the room with the coffin, where she eventually starves to death. He's not the prince of darkness here, more of a prince of white supremacy. This aids us in sympathizing with Blackula as he remains a victim despite also being a villain. Mambu Waldi maintains his regal demeanor as a well-educated black man distancing himself from the black monsters typically appearing on screen. Marshall was a classically trained Shakespearean actor and opera singer who, like Christopher Lee before him, could bring some of that to the screen. Blackula follows Prince Mambu Waldi after he awakes in Los Angeles in 1972. He sees Tina, who he believes to be his wife, Luva. They are played by the same actress, though Netta McGee and Dr. Gordon Thomas, played by Thalamus Razulala, assist a detective in investigating a series of mysterious murders around the city, eventually working to stop Blackula and those that he's turned. There is a particular scene between Dr. Thomas and the cop where the cop thinks that this may be the result of Black Panther activity, and it's weird to think that this, something that's in its sense, like, so sensational would be, I don't know, would be attributed to the Black Panthers, and obviously the Black Panthers and the LAPD and just police all over the place did not have a really good relationship. I mean, it makes total sense because obviously that relationship wasn't really good and we still have cases today of people in law enforcement and just the general law itself 
taking advantage of certain groups or trying to put certain things on to, you know, different political movements and political groups. And so those were aspects of this film that I wish that the movie would have gone into a little bit, such as, you know, the overall relationship that the police department has with the Black Panthers and groups like the Black Panthers and how that overall affects Black communities and how it affects this story moving forward. Dracula says to Blackula as he stands above him, You, you shall pay, Black Prince. I curse you with my name. You shall be Blackula. While Mama Waldi is cursed to thirst for eternity in a coffin, Lula is locked up in the room with his coffin to eventually starve to death. We then flash forward to 1972, and a couple purchases the belongings of the Count. When one of them attempts to open the coffin, he hurts himself bleeding, and with the lock off, Blackula is able to rise and feed on them. He leaves a lot of bodies in his wake who, for the time, are dead before they become the walking dead, so to speak. Or vampires themselves. I do like this idea that Blackula himself is both his own character separate from Dracula, but he is sire to Dracula and I curse you by giving you my name as Blackula. And that's a concept that I don't think is really dealt with a lot in vampire fiction. It definitely has been, but it could have been dealt with differently and better in this. In Interview with a Vampire, we have the young girl who is changed at such a young age, so she is essentially an older woman that stays in the body of a child. One of the things I do really like about that especially is that it deals heavily with bodily autonomy and it deals with the fact that this is not a, this is not something that you have chosen to become, or at least with the majority of vampires out there, I'm sure. And there is so many aspects of who Blackula is, where he doesn't seem to want to really drink blood. This wasn't something that he asked for. He hasn't really turned into somebody who truly desires that. His thirst is simply for the need for it. The only way for him to survive is to drink blood. He finds that if they delved a little bit more into what made it difficult for him and what was really done to him as a man, and this in itself is a very different form of slavery, of course, but he, this was done to him against his will. And, and I think if there was more of this connection of how you know, essentially, especially when it comes to the Bride of Dracula, and in essence, these are having so much of their own their own autonomy uh, taking away from them, and that is something that really starts off strong at the beginning with him visiting Dracula, but really wavers from as the movie goes on. There are some really great moments in this movie when it comes to both the directing, cinematography, and performance of its characters, particularly William Marshall, though I really enjoy the other actors. I think they're great to watch, uh, some more than others, but that's just the case of the movie, right? But one of my favorites is when Cab Driver awakens in the morgue and you have Sam on the phone with the, I believe he's on the phone with Dr. Thomas and he ends up getting fed on. But I love the moment leading up to it where she's running in down the hallway and it's put in slow motion so it's definitely edited that way. But that kind of, it that one has this overall tonal shift into what's going to be happening, happening after this. Dr. Thomas as well as the detective seem to be taking this a lot more seriously and as well as really recognizing more so what is going on that this isn't just something that could be written off as something else or trying to make it or accepting that it may be something else as opposed to the direction that they're going. Rising from his tomb to fill the night with horror. The film received mixed reviews upon its initial release. Variety praised the film for its screenplay, music, and the acting of William Marshall. Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune called the film well-made and quite frightening. Other reviews looked on the film less favorably, with the monthly film bulletin stating, A disappointing model for what promised to be an exciting new genre, the black horror film. 
and that apart from the introductory scene. The film conspicuously fails to pick up on any of its themes, more interesting possibilities, cinematic or philosophical. While I don't personally agree with every aspect of that review, I do understand where they're coming from, and there are aspects of it that I do agree with. There's definitely things that could have been explored a lot more, and I've seen a lot of people looking onto this film as a depiction of Black love, and I see that as something that could have been that could have been really uh, gone into a little bit more in terms of both you know Mama Waldi and Yudva and Mama Waldi and Tina as she looks like his wife and he hasn't seen her in centuries as long as with some other things brought up in the film but it's not delved into quite seriously and in certain aspects that just makes it seem pretty rushed which in a lot of ways seems to be a, a big problem that occurs with vampire films. It either seems really rushed, like in the case of Blackula, or it also seems like it stretches on a little bit too long when it comes with certain more blockbuster style films. And I think in this case, it would have been a good idea to really bring some more of that depth and have kind of what happened so in the beginning truly carry the film forward and to me watching this movie it seems as if Mamu Waldi doesn't have as big of a reaction as I would I would expect when he is you know the last time he was in Transylvania 200 or so years later he wakes up in 1970s Los Angeles it's completely different so many invention styles things have changed and while it is touched on it's not really gone into any depth either and I feel that that takes away some of the humanity and the authentic nature of the character of Prince Mamu Waldi though William Crane did a really good job at still bringing him to life with what he was given and what they were able to do in the beginning. Following the success of the film at the box office there was a wave of black exploitation horror films Blackula got a sequel the following year called Scream at Blackula Scream, where William Marshall returned alongside Pam Greer. Today, the film maintains its mixed review status, becoming a cult classic among horror fans and fans of the vampire subgenre. While even the more negative reviews have a point, there is no watching Blackula without recognizing the prowess and talent of William Marshall and the potential of up-and-coming director William Crane. Later in life, Marshall wouldn't look at the film itself too positively. He didn't see it as a black film because it was a white story rehashed with a black character. This opinion is very apt today, but unfortunately can be misconstrued by a white audience who created the idea of a black Ariel. What I personally liked about the film was that Blackula was Prince Mamuwaldi from a fictional country in Africa who spoke Swahili, was strong and passionate, and loved his wife. He may have been a black version of a popular white character, but William Marshall brought a new character to life in Blackula. He was the first black vampire. He was the first of what would come later. I'm a fan of Blackula because I think it's a rather fun film and it does capture a lot of what made the 1970s interesting to a more modern audience. It is quite funky in nature, if that's what you want to call it. But there is certain things that added to the very stereotypical nature regarding both its black characters and its queer characters. There could be a lot that was changed, but it is important to note that Blackula not only started a wave of black exploitation horror movies, but helped to create a new genre of black horror film. There's a lot that can be said of that as well, and it is best to look upon those subjects from Black creators as they, of course, have a more personal connection to it. What I can say is that Blackula was a great beginning for director William Crane and a great opportunity for William Marshall to be introduced to audiences throughout the years. Maybe he didn't get to stretch his acting muscles as much as he did playing Othello on stage or many other amazing characters, but he did get to bring the first black vampire to life, make us laugh, and give us some joy along the way. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk about and share some knowledge about Blackula. Blackula was released in the 1970s, so if you're into some 1970s vibes and you haven't watched it yet, 
please check it out on streaming linked in the description box below where you can find them. I will be coming back very soon to discuss a little romance movie or I don't know if that one's actually going to come out first because I think this one might come out after. The World Are Spinning. I was a little bit behind on this one because I had initially recorded it via voiceover because my eye was having a really bad time just doing anything. I allergies. But I decided that I wasn't really into it and so I decided that I was going to just come back on the weekend and record it. So I hope this one turns out pretty well. We'll see. Future Ainsley will see. And I hope that you decide to stick around. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell to be notified every single time I post. Mm -hmm.